No my haere mai, te awakairangi. Welcome to uh, sunny Wellington, devoid of wind at Awakairangi Park for this, the final match of the Open Division of the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships between the Wellington Wildcats and Auckland's Group Volume 1. My name, as always, is Blair Munro. I am Austin Clark. And I am Nick Panner. And we are so excited to bring you this match. Uh, just two absolutely fantastic teams. There were predictions made on Friday that it was going to be a group Wildcats finish. And here we are, two powerhouse clubs, giving it absolutely everything throughout the course of the tournament. So far, Wildcats undefeated in the tournament. Group Volume 1, 5-1. and one. Their only loss so far has been to Wildcats on Universe Point. So... Groot were up 14-13. They gave the game away to suffer their only defeat in this tournament. Wildcats 6-0. What a fantastic performance for both of these teams to bring them here to our final stage. Two teams enter, only one team leaves. I mean, both teams will leave. We're not going to sort of round up the losers and, and give them the old yellow treatment, but Thunderdome folks here in Wellington. It's this is an exciting matchup. These two teams, they know each other very well. They've been here before, both of them. Uh, they've played three finals together. Groot has not managed to come out on top yet. But as the game earlier this, in the tournament showed, it's not because they're not good enough. They will get there. Their time is coming. We'll see today if the time is now. Absolutely. Uh, Groot always feeling like they are the underdogs. They come in with that hunger and usually come out firing really hot out of these first a uh, few points, so I'm expecting to see that out of both teams. Uh, a lot of fire on the first couple points, and then I think we'll we'll start to see a bit of a trading battle. That's the one. I mean, over the past few meetings where we've seen Groot versus Wildcats, it's a case of always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Uh, but today might be the day they walk home with that golden ring as they look to put their first championship up over Wildcats, uh, and certainly in recent history. This field has seen many a great final in New Zealand Nationals history. Uh, roughly a decade ago, there was a, an epic universe point, 20 minute for long universe point between the, the previous uh, top Auckland team of uh, uh, Megan. Groot have kind of taken their here, uh, taken over from them. We'll see if they can repeat the dose and uh, make, bring out another Auckland victory. Oh, was that uh, Megan versus uh, Wildcats? That was Megan versus Wildcats. In their inaugural season. It was uh, the third season for the Wildcats. Third season for the Wildcats. Their second final, I believe. Uh, Liam Haverfield, who's playing today, was in the first Wildcats final in 2011. Wow. He's a very, very young lad. Uh, coming back again, he's been part of the team that has dominated New Zealand Ultimate over the last decade, but is due for their crown to be taken. <laughs> and just as we saw, uh, the shield for the Open Championships. Uh, just on your screens only a moment ago, it's important to recognize that in 2020, the winner of the championship was COVID, uh, which tells you a lot about New Zealand's sense of humor. And despite that, we take this very seriously. We're gonna see Lachlan Robertson with the disc to initiate things as Wildcats come out on defense. A huge pull up from Lachlan Robertson. One of the best pullers in the game. And fielded by Jordan Tan. Center to Lee Yo, uh, a stalwart hand, handler for the group side. Howe coming through to Hammond, puts a big shot up, looking for Tan over Sheridan. Oh, and cleaned and up by James Crosby. Well read there, this big disc up high. Two players jump up, neither one gets it. James Crosby knows where to run, takes it down and scores the first point for Groot. Fantastic work. There. Ryan Sheridan must be feeling like he had done a lot, done enough to put Rutan, a dangerous receiver, off of his game. Really going to be a tragic one to see that fall into the hands of James Crosby. Groot will be happy about that result, though. Absolutely. And despite the good positioning of Ryan Sheridan on that one, I wonder whether or not Wildcats, on the whole, expect group to be able to hold most of their offensive points it's going to be a game of inches i mean last time i think we saw group wildcats uh in a final a number of years ago wildcats had a bit of a blowout i think it was like 15 15 9 something in that range um so really good to see that kind of change up in our pool play for it to be a 15 14 finish and now group have to come out on defense they've got to be able to shut down the wildcats early to try and widen up this game 
One of the key differences between that final and this game is the lack of wind. Uh, this is com perfect conditions for, uh, for a good ultimate here. Um, both teams know that they have to, the officers, offenses have to execute. Offense is, has the advantage in the sport. If the offense doesn't take it, then you're not going to win these games. Absolutely, and wind truly has been a big factor in a lot of these Groot Wildcats matchups. Wildcats being from we Windy Wellington uh, are no strangers to practicing in the wind. They get a lot of training under some pretty blustery conditions. Um, however, today we are not seeing even a puff. So Groot is going to be able to show off their clinical ultimate in the conditions that they really train in time and time again. Huge pull by Eng. Whitlock leaving it. It has got sailed out the back of the end zone. So Panaya giving the signal for the brick to bring it into the field of play. Wildcats looking like they're coming out in a bit of a horizontal stack. They'll have three hand handlers back with four in the downfield, leaving that deep space wide open for some dangerous shots right off the initial motion of the disc. And we're seeing it, the disc go immediately to a big hucker, Liam Haberfield, who's have, who has to pump fake that and opts for a swing to Ollie Taylor via Joe Panaya. Ollie Taylor... Shooting a nice inside out forehand to Whitlock on the break side. Following it up to Jack Ketty. And a big bid from Charles Patterson. Doesn't come away with the disc though. Oh, a lovely inside break pass from Ketty. Through to Joe Panaya for the score. Well done by the Wildcats offense. The group, group was there putting a bit of pressure on, seeing if they were ready for this. Uh, the offense was ready for this game, and it's Wildcats responded well. Absolutely great defensive pressure, particularly by Peter Boardsworth there. Uh, getting Liam Haberfield on a sideline with a disc is almost a guaranteed flick huck, uh, particularly when you've got a, a receiver like uh, Nick Whitlock pushing into that deep space. But Boardsworth doing a great job of applying enough pressure to force that disc back towards the center, targeting that far sideline, some nice chain together, give and goes, and a little bit of line drive to close out the point. Absolutely. If we had seen that mark one, f one step further behind, I think we would have seen that shot go into the sky. Nonetheless, Wildcats find a way. Reg without using their long ball, they were able to find the series of connections into the end zone, ending with Joe Panaya. So Wildcats will be coming, looking to come out on defense, probably a similar look to the first point. They won't be unhappy with what happened there. This time they'll be hoping to come down with the disc if it does go up again. And considering as well that we know that Groot have a couple of really strong shooters. I mean, Hammond's got a long arm. Howe does a great job as one of those sort of core stable handlers. Doesn't take those big shots, but keeps the disc moving. Uh, Pash as well, we've seen do some great work. And Lee Yo as well in that handler space. They've got those long shots available to them. Um, so question remains is whether or not Wildcats are going to maybe treat that as a more likely threat to be seen here. Pash receiving the di disc in the middle of the field, dishing it quickly to Waller. Back to Patch on the sideline. Rory Hammond now up the sideline. Jordan Tan streaking deep. Not an option though for the thrower. How to Yo. The disc goes up into the end zone for Rutan. Wide open, found that separation. And a great offensive showing from Groot there. Now an interesting point, uh, Groot are playing a 1-4-2 offense there. You'll see from the initiation, they had two players downfield and five people back around the disc. Um, this is actually something the Wildcats came up with originally, a, d a decade ago. Um, and it, you use it to isolate your two best cutters downfield and basically say, you try and match us one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the deep space open and see what you can do. Uh, Wildcats did a good job there. They forced Groot to go out of that offense and in, into a normal offense, but they obviously used to that and they played through it very nicely. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If you're trying to put two of your best cutters in the downfield space and one of those is Rutan, I mean, chances are looking pretty good that you're going to be walking away with a point. So fantastic work by Groot to keep that lead. It's 2-1. We're still on serve. No real uh, 
no real oh, defensive momentum really making a play just yet, but there's still early days. I do have to say, uh, Leo and Portsworth were the players who took the 142 to Auckland, having played uh, with the Wildcats a, f a fair number of times before, including winning national championships with the Wildcats previously. Groot now with the pull. Rory Moore sending that disc deep into Wildcats territory. Jackson Zoe fielding that, centering to Joe Panaya. Swinson aggressive on the mark, lets the backhand go to far sideline for Haberfield. Whitlock over and around Patterson to find Joe again one more time. Can't quite get around. Haberfield on an upline. Doorstep. Yeah. Touched by Patterson. Disc maybe leaving Haberfield's fan hand just a little bit before the offense was ready for it. The defense was just a little bit more awake there. Ng and Wardsworth really trying to get fired up to initiate the offense for Groot as we see Swinson pushing towards the far sideline. A big bullet goes down the field. Rory Rory Moore, sorry, running that down. Not able to track it down. That disc was just coming in a little bit too hot and a little bit too low. And we've seen a lot of that today in the Open Division, particularly in our earlier uh, semi-final. When we saw Wildcats facing off against Brightside, those same aggressive line drives from the underdog, just being a little bit overcooked, just outpacing the receiver. Hopefully we're going to see Groot adapt, dial those in, start making those connections. Wildcats are not going to give them many opportunities like the one they just gave up. Jackson now with the disc. Successfully finds Liam Haberfield. And I believe a travel is called. That does happen when you're moving the disc quickly. You might uh, feel like you're slowing down. In fact, you're speeding up and getting a little bit more separation from your defender that, than you deserve. Joe to Whitlock, comes around, finds Panaya. Panaya swinging the disc to Haberfield. With Whitlock streaking deep, we might see the disc go, and we do. Whitlock's back shoulder does a 180 turn in the air and brings that one down over the head of Charles Patterson. A very AUDL looking play there. It's one of those ones that, as a coach, you're not going to train for that, but if your players are able to pull it off, you had the quality of Haberfield and uh, Whitlock, you're going to take it. And both of them know that that is an option. Throwing that disc to the back shoulder, finding the side of the field that the defense is not playing on, not expecting the disc, can be very successful if your offense is ready for it. They have been working on that. We're going to get a chance to see that again as Baldsworth tries to close in. Leaves just enough room for the nice around backhand there from Haberfield to a vertical Nick Whitlock. And the Whitlock-Charles Patterson matchup is very exciting. Um, arguably the best defender in New Zealand, Charles Patterson. Arguably the most biggest offensive threat in New Zealand, Nick Whitlock. Um, that's going to be happening throughout the, the game. We're going to see some excitement from those two. And that raises the question, what happens when the unstoppable force meets the immovable object? Wildlat Wildcats having tied the game. We're back on serve. We're going to see Groot receive. It's Jordan Tan, Root Tan, Lee Yo, James Crosby, Pash, Waller, and Hammond. Some huge threats on that offensive line, but facing off against them, Van Turnhout, it's Patrick Cockrum, Titov Smith, Sheridan, Aldridge, Robertson with the disc for the pull, and Theo Moore to round out that defensive line. A lot of hungry players on that line. You've seen each of them get Ds already this tournament. A big pull up there by Lachlan Robertson. Waller with a disc now in the middle of the field finds Jordan Tan. Tan reliably finds more. Hammond, sorry. Back to Waller now. Back to Hammond. Tan streaking deep, and the disc goes up. Turnhout at the, as the matchup, and Jordy Tan finds the disc in the end zone. 
with a few steps on his defender and a perfectly weighted throw from Groot. Great showing from the offense. Beautiful work by Groot, volume one, to put that one in the books. Uh, fantastic, one up over Wildcats, now still on serve. Perfectly way to throw there to Jordy Tan, who made the cut at the exact right moment. The, the handler had the disc and saw him moving. Everything happened like poetry in motion. Jordan Tan often occupying the handler space. Um, you can often get an advantage on your defender by uh, lulling them into a false sense of security, uh, thinking that you might only be cutting in that handler space, but Jordan Tan's got the speed and the veteran know-how to time those cuts to perfection and get open in the deep space as well. I mean, that's why we call him New Zealand's Air Jordan. Just a fantastic work. And he's still intact despite that great body block in our showcase game yesterday that nearly cut him in half. Huge pull goes up. Panaya now with the disc in the center of the field. A center stack run from the Wildcats and a bit of a set play coming off that initial movement. Ollie Taylor looking to keep this one in. Unfortunately, that toe is just on the line when he came down from that sky-high grab. And Wildcats will be transitioning to defense a little closer to their end zone than they would have liked. Great call. We're going to see Miller Mercer pick up and initiate a fantastic handler in his own right. Ooh, a little bit of traffic in that upline space. But they find space, and Peter Boardsworth finds that smart, full upline cut. The hands go up, indicating a pick has been called on the play, though. Can sometimes be the explanation for the separation we see between two players. I don't know. The liggy lifty. Don't. It's an interesting one, but again, it is up to, play, to the players to resolve that call. Not sure whether or not the pick necessarily affected, uh, was between Haberfield and Boardsworth, but possibly that uh, Haberfield heard the pick call and echoed it, which explains that separation. So he stopped his pursuit, leaving Boardsworth open. Now Groot reconvening with their offensive efforts. A lovely inside break. That little over-the-top backhand, and Peter Boardsworth finds his receiver in the end zone. That's going to be Tristan Mercer with the score. That's going to be a break anyway, folks. That's Groot now up by two. But Wildcats have been in situations like this before. They can fire back. It's not, uh, it's not late enough in the match for Groot to be able to relax that pressure, even in the slightest. And uh, Nick, you'll, you'll know that it's not uncommon for uh, Groot to get a little bit ahead on the Wildcats before the Wildcats, you know, click into the gear they need to match that intensity. I mean, even even throughout the course of our tournament alone, we was, we saw Groot up uh, by a couple of points only to give the game away to Wildcats in the late stages. The pressure really comes on at the end of the game. That's is, you set the tone now, you want to keep that tone all the way through. I feel this Groot team has it in them to do it. They've still got to prove it. The game isn't over until that final point is scored. Nonetheless, it's always nice to have a two-point cushion. They'll be looking to trade that as much as they can and then extend it if they can. But there's no place more dangerous to be than two points up in the finals in the early stages. So not quite a timeout call, but those players taking to the line, making sure that comms, that spirit, that teamwork, everything is nice and dialed in. The group defensive line now, we've got Swinson, Patterson, Sun, Kwok, some great players on here. Nice big pull from Eng, it's high, it's gonna blade over early, touching down and rolling. Once again, an offense from the Wildcats leaving a lot of space in the downfield. Leaving it up to their downfield strong disc movers, such as Whitlock, such as Sheridan, such as Panaya. 
keeping that disc motion, never letting this defense get set up. The Wildcats, just like any strong ultimate team, is looking to keep that disc moving before the stall gets above two, three, four maximum. That's going to really keep the defense on their back heels. And when the defense is on their back heels, they're out of position. And when defense is out of position, it can't do its job. The moment you break past that line, if you've got one of your uh, give-go offenders, particularly like your Panayas, those real quick movers, Titoff Smith as well. And Pressure he on the reset. Fitzpatrick Cockrum just floating that one out just a little too quickly, a little too zippy to, for Joe Panaya to reel in. Now Groot on the offense again. Another break opportunity. The disc goes up for a Hail Mary shot to the end zone, and it's ripped out of the sky. Mirko Peperhofer, what a great takedown to put Groot up by three now in the early stages of the match. Timeout has been called by the Wildcats. That is the magic number. Typically three unanswered points. That's when you want to sit. You want to huddle up as a team and think, what are they doing right? What are they doing to shut us down? Is this a mistake on our part, or have they adapted to something that we haven't seen? What changes can we make to really upset the balance to bring this back to our game? And I'd say the Wildcats haven't really got into their offensive flow. Uh, they're hitting a couple of good passes, and then it seemed, everything seems to stall a little bit. Groot's defense has been suffocating. It really has. It's been able to generate those turns. Uh, I mean, we saw Panaya get overthrown, which is a hard thing to do, even on his worst day. Uh, and so Swinson was super excited about that turn and then able to put that assist up for Peppenhofer. Just a fantastic work there by the side from Auckland. First to break the huddle as well. They're putting their seven players back out on the line. They're hungry for defense. They want to walk away with the first half. I know which huddle I'd rather have been in right now. While we say that the game's not over till it's over, Groot are definitely in the position that they want to be. Um, their chat will be very simple. Go out there, do it again. We're doing the right things. Let's keep it up. Wildcats on the other hand. We'll see if they come out with a different look offensively. It seems they've got the same seven on the line. They must be confident in those players, and those players have done it on all levels before. Absolutely. Wildcats, no stranger to a deficit and uh, no stranger to a comeback. So uh, we'll see what they can muster coming out of this timeout. We are hearing a lot of energy from the Groot sideline. The Wildcats a little bit more subdued, really trying to dial things in, get focused. For them at the moment, it's the seven players on the line. Uh, Groot very, very quick to celebrate, very quick to cheer, very quick to generate that energy. But is it premature? Only time will tell. Wildcats on this line, hearing that hearing that energy coming out of the Groot sideline is really going to be looking to silence it with a quick point here and a decisive offensive effort. Mercer's pull fading out the far sideline. That's going to be bricked early. Yep. Pulling that one out of the sidelines generated a lot of energy for their sideline. The <laughs> Hey, that's what we like to see in a cohesive team. They celebrate their successes. They celebrate their less than successes. Oh, Haverfield with a tumble. Great aggression, great attack on that disc. Miller Mercer playing some good defense there to force that one to come a little bit wide. Sheridan not able to hit that connection. A lot of power coming out of Haberfield there. Trying to reel that one in, not able to stick his hand to it quite securely enough. Now back on defense for the Wildcats. They need this, they need to get this disc back. Sheridan feeling a little responsible for that one's gonna be hungry to get something back from the group oh, here. Owen oh Sun nearly bobbles that one, but it's gonna be Patterson. And a stoppage looks to have been called, I think, a travel against Owen Sun. There's the reenactment there from Fitzpatrick. Once you see that reenactment by the player making the call, it's, it's truly impossible to argue with. 
Ah, yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense, right, Owen Sun? Was, his energy was directed back into the upfield space as he bobbled that disc. And then for him to curve that cut around, it's a justifiable call by Fitzpatrick Cochran. But we're going to see Owen Sun with it to initiate the offense. Can't get it to Miller Mercer. Goes through the hands of Boardsworth. Wildcats very, very happy about that turn. Hoping for a hold now to come back the other way. But much as we saw in their match against Brightside, Wildcats are not infallible. It's shared on a great upline. Whitlock going deep. Oh, massive Huge. layout block. And but a great cleanup by Nick Whitlock. He puts it out wide. It's, it's trailing toward the sideline. Get, get in? No. He's overshot it across the field after picking up a huge block from the Groot side. Puts Here we'll see it again. Chest. A big block there. And Whitlock cleaning it up anyways. A little bit too much excitement, maybe. Now Groot has a chance again. Mercer bringing it on the sideline with a high release flick. To get a cheeky up the line shot. Pippen Hoffa with the disc. Patterson getting a little bit of yardage downfield. Mercer again with the disc in the middle. Small gainers here from Groot. This is fine work. A big shot goes up though. Jopanaya tracking it for the defense with against Charles Patterson. Oh, huge take. Looks that like that's not going to be in hand. Panaya doing enough there to put off a very confident receiver in Charles Patterson. Seeing that one again. Charles gets up big, but not able to keep that in the field of play. Boardsworth just putting a little bit too much, must much mustard on that. Sir. Ooh, Fitzpatrick getting a lot of separation in the downfield. Robertson but the mark now. to a, a big call in the field as Whitlock is streaking deep. There's a pick called as Lachlan Robertson was suspiciously free. Maybe having a discussion now about whether how close he should be catching up. You need to be reasonably close to your uh, player in order to call a reasonable pick. Um, if you're letting them run all over the field and you're not close enough to make a play on the disc, uh, generally you shouldn't be calling a pick. Uh, as a general rule, Austin, uh, we use three meters as a guideline to determine whether or not you're actively defending your offensive counterpart. Anything beyond that uh, to call a pick is a little bit unjustifiable, but either way, a pick was called here, so we're going to see Pepkerhova take position, marking up against Robertson. We've got Fitzpatrick and Haberfield on our near sideline. Once again, that that opportunity in the deep space is opened up by the cutters. Jack Ketty now working with Robertson. Centered to a wide open Nick Whitlock, who's happy to work it with Panaya. A couple of dishy ones, keeping that, taking some free yards. Haberfield now with the disc, who floats a big forehand out to Whitlock. Oh, huge play. Charles Patterson with the defensive Monsters play there. Defensive effort there from Patterson. The acceleration when he saw the disc in the air, incredible. One of the most athletic players in the country. Just did enough to get us in the way, make Whitlock have to reach over the top of him. Very difficult catch to have, even for a player of Nick Whitlock's quality. Mercer again from the sideline. Second time we've seen him there, start with the disc there at this point. I mean, he's a fantastic offender as well, but it's good to see him play such aggressive and intentional defense um, really a great asset for this Groot line. Boardsworth comes down with it. Great big air ball. It's Mercer. Winds up the huck. Holses it. Goes to Sun. But a pick has been called. We're seeing a lot of picks on this point. Usually that happens when both teams are, are playing a tight center stack. It's not uncommon for this to happen. Um, both teams might be thinking maybe I need to space myself out a bit more, uh, get some separation from my fellow offenders. I think another factor is the quality of the defense. The cutters are having to work hard. More chance of having these mat, uh, collisions in the middle of the field and picks to be called. 
once again, the players agreeing that though a pick affected the defensive effort, not enough to make a play on the disc, and so the receiver should keep possession. Oh, a great rundown from Mercer to keep that disc alive for Groot. Wide open Patterson. Finding another under option. Groot marching it up the field now. Boardsworth on the doorstep. Great take by Patterson through Fitzpatrick Cochran. Puts a shot up. Patterson to score. I think we might be counting that one as bookends as well as Groot slowly open the door. It's now four point lead as we are six over the Wildcats two. Patterson having a huge influence on this game. He's he's taking away the biggest offensive threat on the Wildcats and the Wildcats haven't been able to adjust to that just yet. He's also doing it on the other end, using that speed uh, to give Groot some easy options to be able to finish points off. Just great work as well. We can see that Wildcats tried to make a switch there. Haberfield was on the disc, applying pressure on the mark, recognizing Patterson wanting to push into that deep space. They called that switch, and despite the timing, I think it was an excellently executed switch, but Patterson was just already a couple of steps into acceleration, uh, managing to catch Haberfield just a little bit behind, widening it up just enough for him to put away that score. Fantastic work by number 14 for Group from Auckland. Absolutely, and it's frustrating as a defender when you feel like you made the smart play, made the smart switch, but just didn't quite commit hard enough to it to make it effective. Wildcats changing up their offensive line now, giving some different players, some of the young players, a chance to run. Um, see how they cope with the, the pressure that's going on now. So far, the experienced players haven't been able to do the job. Big pull from Ng. Van Turnout to field the disc. Centered it to Sheridan. Oh, and a quick adjustment on his feet. Ollie Taylor bringing that disc in. Centering to Darren Leishman. Fitzpatrick with the disc. Back to Leishman doing a lot of work. More on the mark. He's not letting much get away. Inside shot to Sheridan who overthrows Van Turn out for another turnover for the Wildcats. Hugo Switzen, a great offender, working with Yo in the upfield space. Bruce Ng wide open, but a good mark by T-Dolph Smith, doesn't let them get the disc to the break side. T-Dolph Smith sends his body flying, not quite enough. Moore with an aggressive attack on that undercut, but a pick in the downfield space. Van Turnhout uh, catching up to Quark before play resumes. Oh, deep option running downfield. Gonna settle for an easier pass. Yo now with the disc. Back to Moore. Wildcats doing a force middle here. He's switching the force of the disc swung across the field. What situations would you use a force middle there, Nick? Oh, big, when big a team's doing up. very good deep shots. Oh, great bit there by Riley Van Turnout. And gets a disc, gets, gets a touch on the disc, but it floats up in the air on a sudden gust of wind. And Ben Waller comes down with it for another break for Groot. Two that. touches on that disc by Waller. He'll be grateful to see that disc float right in front of his face for that second opportunity. Fantastic work there by Groot to keep that margin wide. It is 7-2 in a race to 15. We will have a halftime break once the first team hits eight. Wildcats to come out on offense now, but we've seen a number of unanswered breaks from Groot. Are they going to be able to keep that momentum, or do Wildcats have an answer to the Groot problem? We will find out very, very, very shortly. Uh, in answer to your earlier question, force middle, when the other teams, you want to, them to jam them up into a certain space. 
Um, if they're going to throw it long, they're going to have to throw it over all of the players on the field, which just makes it much more likely and much more difficult for a, a defensive team. Also, the constantly switching force just means that a cut that seems like it's very good at one moment, with the force change suddenly becomes much more, much less useful. Um, it makes the players think, and that's what you really want as a defensive team. Make the offense think and change what they're doing. And so far, Groot has been doing an excellent job at it on defense. Wildcats haven't been able to play the clean offense that we saw earlier today against Brightside. So we're going to see Bruce Ang with the desk for yet another big Groot Paul. Turning over early, coming down with a lot of edge and a bit of roll. Joe and Robertson scrambling to get it, starting that initiation off. They're not quite pinned down in the end zone as we move out to see Aldridge, far sideline, working with Panaya. A big shot goes down the field to Aldridge. Can he come down with it over two defenders? Groot, big play there. Tristan Mercer make it, <laughs> calling for some sideline noise. Leaving his feet, getting very banana shaped, and smacking that disc out of the air. Uh, somebody needs to make that man into a logo. It's going to give the disc back to Groot. They've got a long field ahead of them, but a hold here is going to let them walk away with the half relatively uncontested by the reigning champs. Wildcats putting Groot. on a zone for defense now. Groot goes long straight away. Jackson Zoe against Owen Zun. Great box out by Jackson. Absolutely excellent defense by Jackson there. Just had that position and held his space. Owen Sun wasn't going to be able to make a play without going through a player. And as this is a non-contact sport, that just wasn't on the cards. Oh, another Fort's turnover. Oh, goes for the quick man. break. Shreds it through to bring it to an 8-2 Groot volume one half. There's a little bit of cross talk that we're seeing from the Wildcats line. They aren't often in a position like this, but they have come back from deficits before. We're going to see whether or not they're able to do that in the second half. But for now, the game is Groot. We will see how that changes as we come back after a short break. My name, as always, is Blair Munro. I'm Austin Clark. And with us is Nick Panu. Hey everyone, Mike here with Ulti TV. I just want to give a massive shout out to Blair, man. We, we've had you on the stream since 2018 and I just wanted to say I really appreciate the work that you do. Ulti TV has been involved in about 27, 2700 games of Ultima and you're world class and I really appreciate your work. And I get that not everybody loves what you do. That's totally okay. But the people at home that haven't seen Ultimate, the friends and families of people appreciate the passion that you bring to the game. So you're world class, man. I'd have you on any stream, anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you folks at home who are watching and supporting everything that Ulti TV do. Hi, folks on the camera. Hi, folks at home. If you like what you see and you want to help us bring you the very best coverage in Ultimate here in New Zealand, Australia, and around the world, head on over to patreon.com slash TV and give us your spare change. We will be back for the second half of the final match in the Open Division for the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships at Awakarangi Park very, very soon.
Welcome back, folks, to the second half of your Open Division final match, the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships Division 1 here at Awakairangi Park in Wellington. Group from Auckland facing your reigning champs, the Wellington Wildcats, currently on the back foot as Group took the, seven, uh, the first half decisively. Six back-to-back -back breaks down from a 2-2 draw to bring Groot up to eight over the Wildcats two. Wildcats now receiving out of halftime. Uh, in the first half, we saw a lot of physicality. Both teams establishing the level of contact that they're comfortable with. A number of picks opening up just as a result of that, that, dice, uh, that, that battle between uh, two physical teams, not afraid to put their bodies on the line, touch each other a little bit. My name is Blair Monroe. I'm joined in the booth by Austin Clark and Nick Panu, two players with extremely solid pedigrees in their own right. Could not ask for some better companions to speak from their own experience, their knowledge in the ultimate scene. Me, I'm just a uh, face for radio, uh, but they've brought me in yet again for Ulti TV. Uh, I could not be more excited to be here, and I would like to think that uh, you can tell that at home, folks. We're going to see Tristan Mercer with the pull for Group Volume 1 to start us off in the second half. Wildcats coming out on offense, looking to punch this one in cleanly, proving that they do indeed belong in this finals match. Initial cut coming from Nick Whitlock there. He was well shut down by Charles Patterson. He gets it on the second attempt. Joe Panaya finding an upline cut there to get some motion in the disc. The big shot goes up to the streaking Ollie Taylor. And a goal for the Wildcats. Much needed. Just out of reach of Owen Sun. Ollie Taylor, a speedy cat indeed. That is exactly what the Wildcats needed coming out of half. They were in a position they've never been in before. Um, not since the very first time they made a final and were just happy to be there. This is a situation where the team that thinks they're the New Zealand's preeminent men, uh, open team uh, now having to claw their way out of a huge hole. Uh, Groot, excellent first half. Their halftime chat will be just keep that noise. The sideline noise was excellent from them. It really helped to build up their players and keep them, their buzz going the whole way through. Just in case anyone seems to forget where Groot are hailing from, it's the chorus of Auckland from the sideline. But, I mean, that's what it is, right? It's train like you've never won and play like you've never lost. And I think that's best exemplified at the moment by Groot, who have managed to maintain a five-point margin throughout this match. Really, really aggressive, physical, intentional, and intense defense to generate those turns and capitalize on those tiny little errors that we're seeing creep into the Wildcats' offense. Wildcats now on defense. Their first defensive opportunity in a while. Uh, obviously, you can only claw yourself back into this game with defense. So the pull goes up from Robertson. Fielded by Jordan Tan. The Wildcats bringing out a zone. And the overhead shot goes across the field to Rutan. And the Wildcats contain. Another swinging shot from Lee Yo out to the sideline. Jordan Tan now looking downfield. Howe jumps through the zone. Big hammer across field, but it's peeling back early. It's going to be Robertson coming down with it. Whitlock immediately takes off to the end zone, but the big mark from Pash doesn't allow that huck to go off. Gardner finding space now. DJ and he sends a great deep shot over to Titov Smith. Can he run it down inbounds? Uh, he took a great run? take, but it's I don't yeah. know if he was in. It's right on the cusp. A lot of bright side players over there watching from the sideline. We'll see what they call it. Looks and like that's going to be out. So the disc is going to go back to Groot. We're going to see them have another opportunity. Questionable hammer option from Howe generating that turn. Looks like his foot had just left the ground before he caught the disc. Yes. The pressure there from... Uh, Waller was enough to make it so he wasn't able to keep his feet in the, in the field of play to, when catching that disc. 
So we're going to see Lee Yo bring that disc to the front of the end zone to initiate, supported by Howe and Jordan Tan. In the upfield space, Waller, Pash, Rutan in the downfield. A very tight zone look from the Wildcats. Very familiar with this type of defense. Going to be very well drilled. Not going to leave a lot of gaps here for Groot to find. Hammond over Fitzpatrick Cockrum comes through to find how open up as the zone closes around. It's Yo back to Tan Pash calling for it in the deep space. Waller as well. Gardner hustling to contain that swinging throw. Back to Jordan Tan now who uses Lee Yo to swing the disc across the field once again. The Wildcats zone doing a lot of work here. Stifling the Groot offense. Hammond trying to make himself an option, but we see Sheridan Lee. close down that wing. Goldby aggressive on the chase, but it's going to go to Howe anyway. A big blade across the field to Hammond. Chips back across to Jordan Tan. Root Tan accelerating towards the end zone, but it's stifled. Corked back up. Patient offense from the Groot side here as we see Yo looking for a reset to Tan on the near sideline. Patient offense, and I'd say patient defense again from Wildcats, just waiting for their opportunity, waiting for that slight misstep from Groot. How again with the disc. Who sends it in the end zone for Rutan? Patrick Cottrum with a big bid there, but out of reach, perfectly placed pass. Lovely offense from Groot there, working it around, tiring the Wildcats defense out and finding the hole eventually. Wildcats will be recognizing that they were able to generate a turnover there. Might look to run that again because as, as defenses go, that was one of their more successful runs. There is history of Wildcats playing zone against Groot in finals of New Zealand Nationals. Uh, generally, Wildcats have been doing it from a position of dominance. They're not in their position right now. They're, they're hoping that it will be enough to scare Groot into giving up a few points. Groot, this Groot, are not the talent team to do that. Well, as they always say in the lower leagues where I made my mark as a player, <laughs> never lose a game without throwing down a zone. You want to make the other team have to think, try something different. Sometimes they've never practiced against a zone. Uh, and if you don't practice against it, you're not going to be able to play well against it. Absolutely. I mean, adaptability really is the word of the day here. Uh, just being able <laughs> to to see what changes the uh, the other your opposition are making, what little tweaks they're doing, how they're finessing, things like their throws, uh, what they're doing on defense, their switches, their communication, whether or not they're giving you room, whether or not they're sticking tight. Just finding whatever defense aren't taking away and grabbing onto it and not being willing to let go. Big, big pull up here by Bruce Ning. And a very brave fielding by Joe. Taylor cutting back into the deep space. We see Panaya comes around to Haberfield. A beautiful break throw by Joe Panaya to get a bit of space for the offense on the break side. Once again, swinging the disc, keeping that offensive effort alive. An inside look now to Ollie Taylor. Oh, a nice break around. Jack Ketty snatching that one out of the hands. Joe to Haberfield, comes around, finds Ketty, far sideline, Pepperhova closing in on defense, goes back to Haberfield, comes around near sideline to a wide open Nick Whitlock, Charles Pedersen slowly looking to close that gap. Joe on an aggressive upline cut, tries to go through Bruce Ng, but can't do it. Groot showing great adaptability on defense, really having an awareness of the downfield movement, having an awareness of the biggest threats coming their way, showing a lot of uh, intelligence on their defensive effort. Some good Groot switches on defense as well, but it's going to be Penaya calling for something right as he's on the doorstep, wanting something to develop in the downfield space. It's a shot through to Taylor for the score. That's what Wildcats need. Right on the doorstep, though, Nick Whitlock showing off his range of throws, making it so difficult to stop 
him getting the disc to any part of the field that he wants. Two throws there to the inside break area of the field. If I'm the group defense, I'm very happy with that point. They had a few sniffs. They made Wildcats work and work and work to get all the way down there. The Wildcats don't want to do that. They want to have a nice, smooth, flowing offense. And they weren't able to do that. It's still a battle for them, scoring any points at the moment. And really, I mean, considering the margin that we've seen here, as long as they can hold, uh, they make the offense work, they tire them out, they play clinically, they don't let the defense get too aggressive. As long as Groot can maintain that pressure, they could walk away with a victory here. Like we've said, it's a five-point game at the moment. Wildcats need a lot more on defense to close that gap. Now, we've seen them do it. We know they're capable. There's some of the best athletes and sports people in the country here. A huge amount of representation on our national uh, men's and mixed squads on both of these sides. Uh, it's going to matter. It's going to come down to whether or not that champion's pride, that willingness, the desire to be a reigning champ, a returning champ, is that going to be enough to fire them up and see them overcome the mighty tree that is Groot? They can only afraid. They can only afford to let Groot take away six more points at maximum. So Wildcats really going to be starting to feel the pressure, knowing that they're going to have to outpace Groot heavily in the scoring in order to get back in this game. Great big pull from Robertson. I can feel my facial hair growing as it takes that long to come down. Tan finds Waller near sideline. We see that same zone look. A big cross field. Emma looking for Crosby on the back foot. Manages to pull it down. And Oh, and he sent it a little too deep. Robertson nearly bobbling that disc into an opportunity for Hammond to snatch up. But <laughs> ends up decisively smacking that one into the ground. Tan allows it to go wide to Aldridge. Pash hot in pursuit of that one. Goes back to Robertson center field. Cockrum converts his undercut into a deep cut, but we see Aldridge going deep for it. Aldridge, one of the fastest people on the field. Doing a great job to track that one down. Decides to come back to Theo Moore. A huge super dump play to Robertson. Losing a lot of yards in that one. Oh, big huge. bid by Lee Yo. Oh, and another big bid. Second big bid by Hash. Crew putting everything on the line here. Sheridan now on the near sideline. Winds up the hammer, decides against it. Throws the inside break to Robertson. And now it's time for Wildcats to get a little bit hyped up and try and bring that energy to their side. Get themselves back into this game. Absolutely. Groot has been showing excellent energy, even on those points that they give away. Really crucial in order for them to maintain their lead. But now Wildcats are getting a chance to build a bit of energy for themselves. This, this I mean, this is the Wildcats we were expecting to see in the finals. Break and break. They're starting to answer. They're starting to gear up. Ultimate really is a game of runs. So each team looking to find that three, four, hopefully five point runs before they give one up. Um, momentum is truly a factor in this sport. Here we see replay a bit after bid from the group sideline. That, that's why they're winning this game currently. They've been able to make those plays bigger than the Wildcats have been able to. And regardless of whether they're uh, successfully getting Ds on those huge bids, those kinds of things fire up your teammates uh, that intensity level rises across the board when you see your teammates laying things out like that. Um, it, whether you get the disc or not, it really does have an effect on how your defensive efforts show. Jordan Tan tries for the superhero landing after the failed attempt to come back and take a bite out of that one before Robertson could close, but it's not going to be enough. Titov Smith with a big pull, looking to send the group line out on offense, hoping to break them yet again, fielded by Lee Yo to Waller. Working with Tan in the upfield space. We're seeing that same Groot zone. It's Van Turnhout, Golby, and Whitlock surrounding the disc, really trying to stifle the Groot offense. Yes, Kent! Yes, Kent! Yes, Kent! Whitlock there with the big mark on. Oh, and a turnover. No options, unfortunately, for Waller. And Panaya very quick to get that disc moving, trying to take advantage of Groot not quite being ready to play defense. Sending it out to Titov Smith. And another inside look, and Whitlock catches this one. 
And the Wildcats are bringing back that energy. The score is now nine to six. That margin, that comfortable cushion that Groot had early on in the match, getting thinner and thinner as Wildcats bring that champion's pride to the fore. What we're seeing is Wildcats really find their rhythm in their zone defense. They've, they've trained this, they know where to place their strong players in this zone. Everyone's locked in, they've been playing their positions for a long time. You see Nick Whitlock up on the mark and his wingspan makes it absolutely oppressive to try to get that disc moving. I so Groot deciding to play on. Not calling a timeout just yet to reset things. Obviously trusting in their line to be able to get out there and, and do the job. They have been able to play through the zone. Uh, they just need to make sure they find that again. Don't don't give in to the, the, the pressure. We have ourselves a final, folks. Oh. This is what we've been waiting for. Universe Point is where we want to go. <laughs> and Groot wanted to go the other way this time than it did when these two fantastic teams faced each other during pool play. They were up by a couple, but managed to give it away to the Wildcats at the last moment, score being 15-14 in, in favor of the local lads in Lilac, the Wellington Wildcats. The big bomber puts up a pull. It's Whitlock sending it long. Fielded as usual by Lee Yo. Sends it to Tan, back to Yo now. Out wide to Howe. Same zone defense that we're seeing from Wildcats here, which is fantastic. It isn't broken yet, so why fix it? Working really well for them, forcing those short passes, hoping for an error to creep in, but it goes by way of Hammond to find Ru Tan in the midfield, coming back around to Jordan Tan. Titoff Smith shuts down Waller on that near sideline, so it's going to stay with Yo and Jordan Tan in the midfield. Yo, such a smart offensive player in these zone situations, knowing uh, when to take the easy option and when to look for something a little bit more dangerous, something that's going to stretch the defense a little bit further. That's the key in breaking through these defenses, is finding the more dangerous option. Oh. Titov Smith once again, time and time again we've seen him just be a little too sneaky for the handlers, getting an arm in there and earning a defense, uh, earning a turnover rather. Just a real defensive bully, you do love to see it. Whitlock picks up, comes around, finds Ryan Sheridan in the middle of the field to Fitzpatrick. Sheridan. Over Tan to Titoff Smith, far sideline. Wildcats here just taking a few throws uh, to settle their offense, find their rhythm. Can be really key after just coming off an intense defensive effort. Whitlock finding a nice inside throw up the line to Fitzpatrick, who finds a streaking Titoff Smith now on the doorstep. Right on the edge of glory. It's Tito oh. Smith with yet another bookends. The interplay there was a thing of beauty. There was a bit of Wellington indoors right there. You and me, five meters of space. We're just going to pop it over the top of the head and run down, run it down. Who, who needs the whole field? Nick, that's the real question. When you've got a five-meter circle around you, who needs the whole field? Great work. A couple of little phone booth cuts there. Uh, that's going to give Wildcats a lot of momentum, I think, if I'm not wrong. That's five unanswered points there. So coming back for the reigning champions, we're seeing a timeout called by Groot, which again makes a lot of sense. We're seeing that momentum swing. What, are, what kind of adjustments are they going to make? How are they going to change things up? They had the first half of this game. They were so dominant in that first half. So what can they do to really swing things back in their favor? On that point there, you could see just the two players, Whitlock and Titov Smith, uh, communicating very clearly with each other what they want out of the, their partner in crime. It's really key to have that uh, connection as an offensive pair in that instance. Um, 
and they're able to generate that just by clear hand communication, staying one step ahead of the defense. And speaking of crime, it really is Tyler T. Top Smith stealing the show here for the Opens Final of the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships at Awakairangi Park. Uh, just fantastic work by both of these teams. But we'll be back with you after a very short break. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. You heard it here, folks. Ulti TV, best in the world. But the question remains, the best in New Zealand here for our open division at Awakairangi Park, the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships. It's Groot from Auckland facing off against the Wellington Wildcats. It is a narrow game now, despite Groot coming out 8-2 in the first half, hugely dominant. It's been Wildcats since then as we see them close the gap. We've only seen one score from Groot in the second half, an offensive hold. Everything else has been breaks. Five points uh, for Wildcats to respond, which is just fantastic work by the local heroes. Our reigning championships. My name, as always, is Blair Munro. I'm joined in the booth by Austin Clark and Nick Pano. And it's just a fantastic match. The weather is beautiful. We haven't got a lot of wins. So shout out to the Wellington City Council uh, for dialing that one back for this Sunday. <laughs> well done, player. Um, <laughs> you're carrying us here. <laughs> Every team needs its captain, and that includes the commentary team. So we are going to see a defensive side one more time from the Wellington Wildcats. To the surprise of very few, it's Lachlan Robertson with the desk. We've said several times throughout this match, he's one of the best pullers in the country, possibly in the game overall. So fantastic to see him here. He's really going to kick things off. Wildcats want another break. They want to squeeze it back to a one-point game. Groot, they need a hold here. We've seen some fantastic offenders on that line. So it's going to be good to see if they can keep it together. Keep those mistakes out of their game. We see Lee Yo receiving the centering pass. Unsurprisingly, we're seeing that zone look come out of Wellington again. Trying to clamp down and constrain this Groot offense. Uh, here in the commentary booth, we are feeling a bit of a breeze start to creep up. You can see a few of the Groot players testing that breeze out uh, before that pull landed. But they're trying to find their rhythm, trying to find the small little gaps in the zone just like they did there. Boardsworth to Tan. Over to Hammond. Gaining valuable yards up the field here. Looks like Wellington will be falling out of their zone defense if they get too close to the end zone, but it's too quick. Groot punches that one in through a series of very talented, very tight movements of the disc. So that is going to see Groot Volume 1 crack open the 10-point barrier. They are now up by three after a fantastic hold. I think it was interesting to note as well, um, in terms of their flow there, they did a good job of breaking through that front line of the zone, but it required a lot of investment in the upfield space. So when they did chip through, the continuations weren't there for them. They didn't have anything in the downfield to immediately close out that point. It took them a little while to move their forces further downfield uh, to allow them to continue those passes and put away that score. But they were still able to do it, so fantastic work. A clean hold by our Groot offense as we see Lee Yo close out to an accelerating Peter Boardman who immediately once again tries to do the gritty. It'd be nice to see a different celebration. Maybe uh, he could take lessons from Miles Hutchison after that fantastic backflip that we saw in yesterday's showcase match. We may have to get the crowd chanting for that again. <laughs> Not sure how much Peter's practiced that, but... Uh because there's always a first time to try. Yeah, uh, we have seen a lot of versatility in Peter Boardsworth uh, for his offense as well as his defense, but we just haven't seen that same versatility translate to his celebrations. Now, Groot, after the timeout, that's the exact point they wanted to have. They, the first half went the way they wanted to go. They knew the Wildcats were going to come back. Wildcats are a champion team. They've done this before. They weren't going to just let roll over in this game. Groot's now scored that point. They got their confidence back. They know their defense can go out and then cause trouble. They can play the rest of this game and, and close out the final five points. Wildcats offense going to be looking to punch this one in smoothly. 
They want to get their D-line right back out there before the Groot offensive line has a chance to rest. You see Ollie Taylor with the disc, a big shimmy fake. Goes around, Bruce Ng finds Joe Panaya, center field marked by Swinson. Call in the downfield space. A lot of powerful cuts happening all over the downfield. You can see a bit of dust start to pick up as every single player on that field is working with power in order to get open. Fordsworth aggressive, forces the recentering pass to Joe, who bounces back immediately to Haberfield, trying to follow through with an upline cut, but it gets looked off. There's not a lot developing for Haberfield. The stall count getting a little bit high. Has to go back, lose a couple of yards to keep the stall count low. Resetting to Panaya, who's calling for Jackson. Joe on an upline, turns back around. It's Titov Smith as the dust comes up. And Tito Smith throws it to a... Haber, to the place he thought Haberfield was going to go. Haberfield th saw three defenders all in his way and decided not to go there. Unfortunate miscommunication and Wildcats are giving the disc back to Groot. It's a bit of a curse when you've got such uh, promising receivers downfield. You expect that if you throw it, they're going to come down with it. In this instance, the uh, receiver still has to go for it in order to uh, give themselves that maybe favored chance at the disc. Patterson receives the crossfield hammer from Swinson, working with Bordsworth and Swinson to test the field a little bit. Wildcats in the zone, looking a little bit disjointed at the moment, and Gruder taking advantage of that with some great play. Looking very dangerous and very aggressive with the offense. That's the kind of play that can really break a zone into pieces. And that's one of the key things too, when you're playing a zone, you're looking at seven players, all on the same page, hopefully. A big hammer goes up, and that's another break for Groot. That's going to be 12 to 7, Groot up by five yet again for the second time in the match, despite the huge comeback pressure from the Wellington Wildcats. We have 90 minutes on the clock, so we've got 20 minutes left before we hit our soft cap. Race to 15 at the moment, but with the pace these lads are putting on uh, the points and the aggressive defensive pressure that we're seeing, who knows how this game is going to unfold. It is definitely the game of defense. Defensive lines on both teams have scored the majority of the points so far. And so that is going to be a timeout call. Peperhofer going to take down that hammer. What a beautiful score there. Nicely done, Mirko. Fantastic work. So, timeout's going to be called. Uh, Nick, I mean, you're you're an incredibly... Oh, no, no, time. no timeout. All right, they're just chilling, I guess. Having a few moments, having a bit of a chat. Who needs a timeout? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, me. when you're playing at a, a major championship, there are people with timers on the field telling you how long you have to take. When you're playing in a New Zealand National Championship, th those people don't exist and sometimes they may push the time. Um, hence the sidelines are asking questions like, is this a timeout? <laughs> but I think both of these teams are probably happy to have a little bit of a break. It's a hot day. They'll be doing some hot work. But this is it. It is hot work, but they can afford to leave it all out there. This is the last game either of these teams are going to play in our open division. Uh, our entire open season ends for these teams at the conclusion of this game. And they can take a couple of weeks off while they start training for the mixed season. We see Tristan Mercer with a huge pull for the Groot side to be fielded by Whitlock. Joe Panaya with the disc in the middle. And a set play looking looking like it's developing for Wildcats, but it's a little too disjointed in order to result in a big downfield gainer. Wildcats instead resor uh, resorting to a uh, leg work heavy offense, getting a lot of gritty cuts in there, just getting that m millimeter of separation they need from their Groot defender in order to progress that disc up the field. There we see another hungry look from Charles Patterson, trying to contain Nick Whitlock. Pick has been called in the downfield. Once again, that matchup between Charles Patterson and Nick Whitlock is just beautiful to watch. Two high quality players going at it 100%. Uh, the disc will come back into the play with Andy Fitzpatrick Cockrum on the sideline. 
Dan Aldridge making a streaking cut up the line and opting for a reset instead. Sheridan faking off the center field. Tries to shoot one through and it's a layout from Swinson to stop Aldridge getting a hand to it. That's the turn they need. He wanted to put it up, but Panaya shuts off the lane. It's lock box in a field marked by Aldridge. Swinson doing a great job of recognizing the stall count is getting high. A little bit of a chaotic look from the Wildcats is going to happen at the last few seconds, making that heads up defensive play. Now Groot once again streaking down the field. And it's Groot oh, to score. Patterson. One, two, three down the sideline. Groot making that offense look a little bit easy in the end. Once again, the pressure coming through. The Wildcats cutting has been a little bit off at times. Groot pressure just building and building and building. And you end up with situations where Ollie Swanson's able to take advantage there with a great layout bid. Huge play there. Now, I could be wrong, because our scoreline says 12-7. I, I could have sworn we were on 12-7 before, but we're going to see. Uh, well, we're going based on the scoreline on the field, which is 12-7 now after the conclusion of that point. Fantastic work by Groot to widen that margin just a little bit. We are going to see a timeout called this time after that score. Game of runs this has been. That's three in a row for Groot after the Wildcats scored five in a row to bring it back. Pippenhofer with a great little assist through to Patterson, taking that up line with one hand just on the doorstep right in front of that front corner of the end zone. In this timeout, both teams are going to have very different types of conversations. Uh, Wildcats, they're going to be looking to find that intensity, realizing that they have no more opportunities to let points slip through their fingers like they did there. They're going to have to clean it up. They're going to have to produce something miraculous to go on a bit of a run here and threaten Groot's uh, sprint towards their champ, their first championship. Oh, the seat that I'm sitting on is uncomfortable. Though fortunate for my rear end, I'm only using the very edge of it. This match is so, so exciting. Uh, as you said, Nick, we've got a game of runs. We're swinging backwards and forwards. Uh, the momentum... Uh, the it's just going in all directions. The pendulum swings both ways. The sword of off uh, of offensive ultimate cuts with both edges. Uh, just really fantastic to see. We're going to see a Wildcats offensive line. Some classics here: Kitty, Whitlock, Hog, Haverfield, Taylor, Panaya, and Joe. They've got a. Very strong offensive line here. A lot of speed on this line. A lot of dangerous downfield receivers. And a couple of very confident throwers. This is a very experienced line with some fresh legs mixed in. Groot's D-line, however, they have been very successful today and they will be feeling very confident going into this. Mercer with the pull, readying himself. Gonna look to put this one as high and f deep into the Wildcats territory as possible. We'll see a very speedy chase out of the Groot side here. Huge and high with a lot of float. We're gonna see where it touches down. What? Out of bounds. Panaya to bring this disc in for the Wildcats in the center of the field, right around the brick mark. Whitlock sitting in the lane, getting ready for a look in either direction. Sends it wide to Haberfield. Will he find the next receiver? Yes, it's Jack Ketty sitting wide open. A couple of open looks downfield, but he opts for the safer option to recenter the disc. Tyler Hogg to Jackson Joe. Over to Panaya. Wildcats slowly inching that disc closer to the end zone. Go, 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 
And the Wildcats are able to wiggle that disc in through a couple of tight maneuvers between Whitlock and Taylor. Once again, a little one-two play by the end zone, finishing the job. So we're going to get to see that again. Whitlock stepping through from Penaya to put that one on the board. It's going to be 12-8. Still in favor of Groot. Wildcats, though, a necessary hold for them. It's going to give them a little bit of juice, a little bit of momentum. We're going to see them swing back hard the other way. So will the game of runs continue to be a game of runs? Wildcats get their offense to score a point. Now can their defense come out and tighten this game, want that back up again? Absolutely. The Wildcats cannot afford to give up another run of points to Groot. They do not have that luxury anymore. Groot currently outscoring Wildcats 3-2 to two in this final match. So we're 12 up over the Wildcats 8. And we're going to see an opportunity here for a great hold. So a strong offensive line from Groot's going to be on the field now. Hammond, Pash, Tan, Howe, Crosby, Boardsworth, and Yo. Facing off against Titoff Smith, Robertson, Fitzpatrick, Van Turnhout, Whitlock, Sheridan, and the impeccably speedy Theo Moore, making everyone else look like they're moving in slow motion. Theo Moore, an absolute monster on defense when you get that. When he lets the dog out, it's a real scrapyard fight. Once again, the Wildcats in their zone, daring Groot to throw over or through the, the zone, as they do with their lovely pass to Rory Hammond. But again, committing so much of their offensive force to the upfield. Once they've broken through that zone, there's no way to continue the disc forward. And what it's allowing the zone to do is then catch up, and it's going to hit the turf as they try to reset to how. Yo having thrown that beautifully speedy hammer uh, over the zone to get them through that zone defense, unfortunately seeing his next opportunity with the disc hit the dirt. Wildcats looking to regain their composure and punch this break in for a valuable momentum shift. Robertson there providing the, the last minute, last second rather, reset as Whitlock's options were diminishing. Fitzpatrick Cockrum now sending it into the end zone. He's got two options. Will Tito Smith be the one? Oh, yes, it is. Huge bid once again from the defense. The Tito Smith able to box out and get, come down with the disc. Rutan going up huge to try and take that disc back for Groot. Great work by Titov Smith to keep that one in hand. Fantastic work to bring it back to a three-point game. Wildcats might be feeling a tad bit lucky there, but they won't be questioning it too much. They need a little bit of luck mixed in with a lot of grit here in order to get themselves back into this game. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling number 42, Lee Yo, doing some great work on the offense and an uncharacteristic throw down to generate the turn, but Wildcats quick to capitalize, not willing to let that one go. And I mean, that's exactly what you'd expect from a ferocious animal like a Wildcat for them to sink their teeth in and just tenaciously work and worry away until they get the kill that they were looking for. So great work by Titoff Smith to put that one on the board. We're gonna see Wildcats defensive line coming out now. Expect the Wildcats to come down with zone once again. They're getting the turnovers they want from it. Liam Haverfield to put up a huge pull here. Lee Yo once again fielding that disc, sending centering it to Peter Boardsworth. Boardsworth and Yo trying to show a bit of patience, a bit of composure with the disc here. Crosby now. Every member of the Groot squad here active. 
needing to put in the work with their legs in order to get themselves into a scoring position. Patterson. Patterson with the double touch. An incredible grab. How? How? How touches the hell that, to keep that in? It's, touches that yeah. disc, wants to keep it in play, I mean, and then toes the line to keep it in bounds. Incredible using, composure. Using the touch and the raid to pop the disc up enough to give him time to get a catch on it is fantastic. Crosby threading through to Bordsworth, accelerating out of the throw, finding Yo right on the doorstep. And then throwing it into the ground. Peter Boardsworth doing so much work to get that disc driving upfield, but unfortunately got a little too much momentum. A huge fake from Haberfield sends Pash flying out of the out of the back of the end zone. Really, sorry, un out of the side. really unsure what Groot were looking for in that last possession. Oh, we're going to see Van Turnhout on an upline cut mark by Crosby. Comes back around to a wide open Theo Moore. Huge touch by Patterson. 14 on 14, but a pick is called. Now, I mean, that's the, that kind of raises the question as to what, whether or not uh, Lachlan Robinson uh, stopped his cut in response to the pick, whether or not the pick would be retracted as to whether or not that would uh, maintain. When that throw went up, Lachlan Robertson slowing down due to the fact that he call, heard that pick call from the stack. Yeah, so if, the pick did occur before the throw. So I think that's the right play there. Yeah. So resolving this pick call, the disc will be back with Theo Moore in the center of the field for the Wildcats. Jack Kitty can't uncork the big shot, finds Panaya on a short under. Robertson with a big fake leading him right through like a matador. It's Pash on defense, the hammer goes up! Jack Kitty looking to bring this one in, but it's Patterson again with a huge defensive play for Groot. Patterson is everywhere at the moment. He's, you see it. I don't know how he does it. Well, I do know. Being an incredible athlete, an incredibly smart player. I mean, that, and that's the thing. Everyone always looks at players uh, who are athletic, very strong, very fast, and thinks it's their athleticism that lets them do it. But don't discount the intelligence of Charles Patterson, that ability to read the play. He knows what kind of a player Robertson is. He knows he's got those big shots based on the mark, based on the aggressive pressure from the defense. Were they going to go for a hammer? How confident was he in that? Could he see where that throw was going to end up? Could he get himself in position to make a play? Now it's Yo. We're seeing do a lot of the work with his throws for this group offense. Sending a hammer to the far side and then a nice uh, blady throw up the sideline opposite to keep things moving. Immediately Ooh. called down by pretty much all of the Wildcats players. Yo, feeling that that throw is up, it is in, gonna be an interesting one. Did the back edge of that disc touch a blade of grass? Yes, oh, yes it, it looks it like it did. did. Unfortunate. Some great work by Tristan Mercer, a fantastic display of spirit indicating that he's got a perspective based on the screen. And he's offering it. Some fantastic spirit. So again, just an awareness of the rules as well. Players are only allowed to use things like replays where they're available if they're not going to be directly advantageous towards the team. So if um, if we'd seen a perspective that the disc was up, Tristan Mercer would have actually been violating the rules had he offered that same perspective. So fantastic display of spirit there. Great integrity. Uh, we're going to see Titoff Smith pick up the disc, have Robertson supporting him in the midfield space. So aggressive, but Haberfield on the outside edge, getting it with a one hand. Theo Moore doing a lot of work to make himself an option for Robertson. Send it, sends it right back to the captain. And now Haberfield was shut down by Boardsworth, but there is a pick called on the field, uh, allowing Jack Ketty to get free. 
and the disc will restart with Robertson perhaps coming in at a stall count a little higher than he would like, not seeing a lot of reset options in that backfield for the Wildcats at the moment. And that's one of the perils of being an offensive player, making those cuts that do lead to picks, is that it shuts down the momentum while keeping the stall count high, and so takes a little while for those engine gears to keep turning. So great work there by uh, Wildcats to get a reset early, finds Panaya. Nice little switch on the defense there, but Haverfield's got it open. Looks for Van Turnhout, can't find him. Flicks off the fake. And Wildcats doing an excellent job, showing great composure here on the on their end zone line. Robertson has it now marked by Patterson. Right on the doorstep, chips through to Haverfield for a score. Wildcats hit double digits. The score is now 12 to 10 in favor of Groot from Auckland. Haverfield able to just be too explosive for Boardsworth there and get half a body length on him, making it for an easy, dishy pass by Robertson for the score. Now, the Wildcats offense looked fairly disjointed there, taking a, long, a lot of passes to, in order to get anywhere near the end zone. That full credit goes to the Groot defense. They're making the Wildcats offense look disjointed. They've got some excellent players who know how to play together. Um, and they are struggling to get the options they want to take. They're always having to go to plan B and plan C. Uh, full credit to Groot. It's been unfortunate for them. They've had a couple of soft turnovers, which is the only reason why this game is now is still close. Absolutely. And, and Wildcats may be used to coming down with a few of those... Uh, you know, riskier options against other teams, but Groot putting up a monstrous display on defense, not letting anything that doesn't deserve to be caught be caught. Wildcats to come out on defense. It's Whitlock with the disc for the pole, the big bomber himself, the hoodie putty hammer, bringing it down for the Wellington Wildcats. We're going to see Groot, a similar offensive line to that that we've seen already. We've got Rutan, Charles Patterson, Lee Yo, Pash, Hammond, Crosby, and Boardsworth. And that is going to be our soft cap. Now, what that means, folks, is we have to play out this point. Once we have, regardless of what the score is, at the end of this point, we will add one to the final score, and it is a race to that number. So that is fantastic. We'll Hopefully these uh, players will be aware of it. And Wildcats here with their zone defense again. Whitlock opt for a rolling pull there, trying to get that one to roll out of bounds uh, near the sideline. Unfortunately, did not get the distance he wanted. And now they're finding huge gaps. Pash chips through to Hammond. It's a game to 14. That point goes on the board. Group volume one go up 13 over the Wildcats, 10. And now it is a game point situation. Perfect defense here from Groot is going to see them walk away with their first championship in who knows how long. Nothing but perfection from the Wellington Wildcats is going to see them walk away with a win. I mean, that was excellent work by Rutan. Realizing that that zone defense had just drifted out of position a little bit. And it only takes one crack in the zone in order to open things up because you have invested so many players uh, into that front of your defense. And, and that's really good to see. I mean, that's something that I've noticed throughout the last few zone offensive points is that Groot really committing a lot of their force to that upfield space to keep the disc moving. Here, finally, just committing passion, him and those two players to that deep space allowed for that quick, uncontested continuation for what looked like a really easy score once they'd shut... Um, shut the door on the front of that zone once they'd moved past that initial wall. So during that point, uh, the time cap went. Um, it's now a game to 14. If Groot scores this one, the game is over. Things are getting tense here in Wellington. The underdogs in Groot confidently on top wildcats however no stranger to a comeback in these positions against group i can tell you it's getting tense in the commentary booth we're all really excited for an upset the group d line has been great all game they'll be feeling confident now getting the turnover and finishing this game off now not having the offense have to go back out in the field Big pull, but sailing, drifting out of bounds. 
Give both teams a little bit of time to set up. A little bit of time for the nerves to build as well. Joe Panaya, however, looking cool as a cucumber as he walks that disc to the brick mark. Getting things moving for the Wildcats. An initiation look. Whitlock getting the disc on the break side. And a huge launch goes up to Fitzpatrick. Cockrum reins it in. That is a point for the Wellington Wildcats. And they're going to need to keep this train rolling. That is one of the hottest things about being down at the soft cap. Or even closer when your opponent's one point away from winning. Is that... Every time you score, you have to give them the disc on offense. So here, uh, Groot having scored and sending us to uh, a game to 14. Yes, Wildcats started on offense, but now they have to work to generate that turn if they want to stay in the match. They can't just let Groot continue to score uncontested. It's all defense for the Wildcats. Here through the rest of this game, it is all offense for Groot. Now, I have to wonder if we're going to see that zone again. It's been so effective at really stifling and slowing down um, the Groot offensive line until that last point where we saw them make those necessary adjustments to quickly break past once they'd gone over the top. Uh, but up until that point, that Groot, uh, sorry, the Wildcats zone was just doing such a good job of containing those fierce offenders from the Groot side. I fully expect them to carry on with that zone. They know that Groot has had a mental block against it in p previous years. Uh, they will make sure Groot, if Groot's going to win this game, they have to work through that. That'll overcome it once and for all. And at this point of the tournament, it is all mental. Physically, their bodies have done everything. They know that they have the final bit of energy is there to give out. It's who, who has that mental energy to continue and, and push through and win this game. Absolutely. Not a member of either team can afford to switch off mentally at this stage. The big pull from Robertson landing in bounds, giving that zone a chance to set up on that sideline, trapping Yo there, but he breaks free. Boards worth it with, his, with the disc now. Over to Jordan Tan. And the zone is reset. Ooh, a bit of a reach there from Yo, but keeps the disc alive. Chipping through the gaps in the zone. The Wildcats another, wall. Big hammer over the top. Another hammer from Yo. Oh, and Fitzpatrick. Sniff after sniff after sniff. But Groot still have it. They have a shot now. They're getting close to the end zone. Keeping his composure. Jordan Tan. Boardsworth now. Throwing the... And the disc goes... Sailing out of the side of the field. Turnover. And on such a crucial point, too, Wildcats have to be happy about that. Could not quite see where that disc had landed here in the commentary booth. My heart had uh, momentarily stopped. Now it's a Wildcats from their own end zone on the corner. Whitlock to Robertson early. Whitlock again. Fitzpatrick Cockrum streaking deep. Whitlock looking him off, however. Movement through the back of the field for the Wildcats via, via Van Turnhout. Dan Aldridge now getting it under for a few, game, a few meters. Ryan Sheridan pump faking the deep look. And he'll find Nick Whitlock for a swing. Robertson now with the disc, very secure hands. Cats knowing they're not, not needing to get too tricky here. They just have to grind this point in and keep doing work on defense. The longer they grind, the more the Groot offense gets tired. T Top Smith making a lot of yards there with that throw. And finding Fitzpatrick Cockrum for we, a point for we, the Wellington Wildcats. We really do have ourselves a final, folks. One point in it, it's 13-12 in a race to 14. We've seen uh, this play out almost exactly in pool play and it did not go Groot's way. Wildcats need two more breaks, just like that one, and they'll be able to maintain a championship. Looks like we may have a timeout call despite the fact that we have moved past our soft cap.
Wildcats wanting their D-line to get a little bit of a break. There. Get back out there and play that zone again. And there we saw that nice floaty up line to Titov Smith, allowing the offense to get so far ahead of their defenders, making that next throw uh, a bit too easy. Groot is going to be looking to answer with some crisp offense here. Now, I think after his performance, not just in this tournament, but in this match specifically, Tyler Titov Smith's probably in a really, really good position to renegotiate his contract with the Wildcats. Um, goodness gracious, they don't make free agents like that anymore. Just a fantastic performer. He's done so well. Uh, aggressive on defense, really assertive on offense, just fantastic clinical throws, willing to commit physically where it's necessary, but also remain calm, remain patient, and just do fantastic work, really s allowing a lot of the offensive and defensive structures to pivot around his position and performance on the field. Now, Titoff Smith came into the game as one of those slightly annoying players who was able to throw a 50-meter forehand uh, within a few weeks of playing the, the sport. He's come a long way from that. The, the athletic ability, the, the smartness is really, has really come in leaps and bounds until he's, he's found himself as one of the best players in New Zealand. We are seeing a very familiar line out for the Wildcats, kind of their go-to line in these moments. Players who have played in this position many, many times. We saw Fitzpatrick Cockrum put his body on the line in that last point. Not directly resulting in a turnover for his team. However, getting a turnover in the end and Wildcats punching that last one in. Groot, however, having done a lot of the legwork early in the game, have put themselves in an excellent position, needing just one more point to win, getting that offensive opportunity here. Big Whit rip by Whitlock. Whitlock puts that disc about uh, 500 meters into the sky, making it very difficult for Boardsworth to field. And the Wildcats zone is clamping down once again. Can Groot find the Grax this time? It is all on the line here. Division one, national championship here in Wellington. Both teams fighting for these last few points. Oh. And it's Joe Panaya Smith with a huge bid to snatch that disc out of the air. The Wildcats have their chance. Big the hawk from Haberfield. And Whitlock comes down with it. That is gonna oh. take us to universe, folks. We have ourselves a game. It's like it was scripted. These two teams cannot depart from the script no matter how hard they try. They will take any game they can to universe. I mean, and that's the thing, right? These two teams are the two best open teams in the country. It makes sense that they clash so hot, so contested. The games are so tight, it is margins, fractions of a millimeter being the difference between success and victory. Their second universe point game in this tournament alone. It's almost hard to believe that Groot were up by eight, at, up, up by six rather, at half time. Games, games are not won at the start. The games are won at the end. This has happened many times before. I still got my money on Groot finishing this out. They've been there before. They they know the pain. They they will feel it in their loins. They they want to drive this through. They're not going to go home tonight on the pl plane and, and say without a victory. Everything will be put out in the field now. Both sidelines now competing for who can bring the energy. That energy is going to need to translate onto the field for their respective teams. Groot receiving the disc, having that offensive. Uh, advantage. Wellington maybe having the advantage of, the, of momentum. And that's exactly it. It's little mistakes that we've seen in the late stage group game that have allowed Wildcats to claw this back. Hugo Swinson to Jordan Tan as Jack Kitty gets a little physical, finds Lee Yo near sideline. 
Every Wellington player on their toes in the defensive space. But Groot so far moving the disc with pace, finding a gap here, working that disc up the sideline. It's important as an offense in a zone look not to get too greedy and give the sniff to the defense to find a little bit of a, a little bit of a defensive look off of a, a slightly th uh, underthrown or overthrown punch through the middle. Charles Patterson now doing a lot of work for Groot. And Lee Yo as well in that Match. midfield doing a lot of quarterbacking, a lot of dialogue. Well, it's into a match defense now. They're going to make Groot earn it. They've, they've been playing against the zone for a long time. This is the time to change things up. Oh. And Whitlock sticks a hand out, forcing a turf from Lee Yo. This is intense. Haberfield finding a breakthrough to Robertson, who's going to send him out of that space and a beautiful up line, floaty inside look. And the throw goes up. It's Chopinai in the end zone. It's Wildcats to win it. What a tail. My God. Joe Panaya getting the critical D just two points earlier, bringing us to universe. And now the Wildcats can not believe it themselves. And they will be going home with heavy heads, not from a loss, but from the weight of the gold medals around their necks. What a fantastic finish to our 2024 Open Division uh, tournament schedule at the 2024 Division One Championships. The lads in the lovely lilac, the Wellington Wildcats, are your champions. Groot with a silver place finish on Universe Point. A fantastic performance by both of these teams, leaving nothing behind. A heartbreak for the lads from Auckland. You but I hope that they know how proud everyone here is of just how hard they fought for that finish. The individual efforts, the team effort from Groot was incredible. They really gained themselves a significant advantage early on in this match. Uh, one of the biggest leads they've ever had. Um, they're going to be really uh, struggling to reconcile what's happened the, towards the end of that game. But uh, unfortunately for them, it's, it's not something they're too unfamiliar with. They're going to find it one of these years and close this game out. Yeah, and that is going to be the four-peat there for the Wellington Wildcats. 21, 22, 23, and 24. Four straight championships for the Wellington Wildcats. But our coverage is not yet done. We here at Ulti TV are so happy to bring you the final match of the women's division at our championship here at Awakairangi Park. We have the Fast Blueberries facing off against Misfits. It's Auckland versus Auckland. Some great defensive pressure about to put the sky back in Sky Tower. But uh, until then, my name is Blair Monroe. I am Austin Clark. And I am Nick Panu. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back again very shortly. Alti.tv.